Good morning, everybody. I'm going to go through this PowerPoint kind of quickly with you. This is our next lesson. It is about nets and surface area. So we're going to use nets to help us find the surface area of different solids. I also posted several videos on Edsby to help get you started on this. We already have these vocabulary terms. A solid is a three-dimensional figure. A face is any of the sides of the solid. Uh, we also have a specific face called the base. It's usually the bottom or the top. You may have a prism, which is made up of lots of rectangles. And then you have two parallel, meaning they don't touch, parallel bases, like this is a triangular prism. This is a pentagonal prism. You might have a pyramid, which is lots of triangles that come to a point with one base, so a hexagonal pyramid. This is a triangular pyramid. And that there is a square pyramid. You may have solids made from circles, such as cylinders or cones or spheres. You do need to recognize those in sixth grade, but we won't be doing surface area with those. These are the nets, so that's taking a solid and splaying it open, like slicing open a box and folding it flat. Each of these would make the solid underneath. So here we have a square prism. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six sided, so a hexagonal prism, a cylinder, and a square pyramid. I like to joke that you can sit on a prism. You don't want to sit on a pyramid. And when we're talking about surface area, we're talking about adding up the area of every single surface. So kind of like covering a box with wrapping paper, or if you were to um, paint a room, like over spring break, I painted my kitchen. I needed to know the surface area. I had to find the area of every wall of my kitchen so I could make sure I had enough paint. So we're gonna start with a net for a pentagonal pyramid. Pentagonal, the word pentagon, five sides. So. We're going to start with the base. Five-sided figure is a pentagon. Since it's a pyramid, that means it's going to have a lot of triangles. So from every one of these sides, we're going to draw a triangle. This is what a pentagonal pyramid would look like if you laid it out flat. A net for a cube. A cube is a three-dimensional square. It has six faces, and every face is a square. I'm going to show you one example of a cube's net, but there are actually several. So this is a net for a cube. We could make this the bottom. This would be the back and the front. This would be the left side. This would be the right side. And this piece right here would fold over the top. And that would be like a box. All right, surface area. This is where things get a little sticky. We need to find the area of every surface of this prism. This is a triangular prism. See the triangle there? So it has a triangle in the front, a triangle in the back, and then a rectangle on the bottom, a rectangle here on the, we could call that the top, and then another rectangle in the back. So when we want to find the surface area, we need to find the area of each of those. So that's a total of five sides. You could choose to draw a net. This is, not, um, this is not what I would typically do because many of us have difficulties drawing the net and then especially matching up each of the um, dimensions with the appropriate side. This is not necessarily the route I would take, but you have to find what works best for you. I would break it down into each of its shapes. So we can start with the triangle. So we have the triangle here area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. So for this, the base is four, the height is three. Be very careful, this five is not the base or the height. Remember, height, right. Where you see the right angle is where you're gonna find the height in your base. So if we multiply four times three, we get 12. Half of 12 is six but we don't have one triangle, we have two. So you're going to want to double that. So both triangles together give us a total of 
12 square units. So we are two sides down. We still have three rectangles to go. Find the area of each rectangle. It's going to break this down. These rectangles are not all the same size, so you have to be very careful here. The top rectangle is a length of 10 and a width of 5. Again, you've got to be careful. This part of the triangle would line up with this rectangle, and that's kind of hard to see when you have it splayed out as a net. If I go back, let's go back, back, back. So here, oops, hold on a second. Here, we can much more clearly see this is a length of 10 and a width of 5. So it might be easier to use the actual solid as opposed to the net, okay? This bottom rectangle, let's take a look at that. That is a dimension of 4 by 10. Can you see that? Here's our bottom rectangle. It's got a width of 4 and a length of 10. And then we've got a rectangle in the back here which has a width of three. Now this piece is not labeled, but if you look at the bottom rectangle, if this side is 10, then that back part that we're not really able to see is also 10. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to that other page. Bear with me here. Okay, so top rectangle, 10 by five. So we have 50 units. The middle rectangle here, the skinny one, is 10 by 3 or 30 units and then this other one which almost looks the same as the top you've got to be careful is 10 times 4 or 40 units now we have found all three rectangles and two triangles we're looking for surface area which is the total so we're gonna to have to add all of those together 12 plus 50 plus 30 plus 40 is 132, notice it is square units. We're still talking area here. Okay, so we can talk about this one. This is a, it almost looks like a square. You cannot call it a square though. This is a six, this is a seven. So while it might look like a square, it's not. This is a rectangular prism. I am not going to draw the net for this because I prefer to actually break it down into its sides. So let's start with the front. For um, this sake, I'm just going to call this the front. When you're doing this on your own, you can refer to the sides however you would like, as long as you know which side is which. So I'm calling this the front, which is the same as this back here, 6 times 7, which is 42. If the front is 42, then the back is also 42. Let's take a look at one of these sides. I've got this long side here. This has a length of 20 and a width of 7. 20 times 7 is 140. If this side is 140, then that other side, opposite it, is also 140. So we've got the front, the back, and the two sides. Now we need the top and the bottom. So if we look at the top and bottom, we've got a width of 6 and a length of 20. 20 times 6 is 120. If the top is 120, then the bottom is also 120. Remember, surface area is the total of all surfaces. So we're going to take all of these numbers and add them up. You may also choose to take these and double them, which is what I did here. So 42 plus 42 gives us 84. 140 plus 140, or 140 times 2 is 280. 120 plus 120 or 120 times 2 is 240. When I add all of that together we get a total surface area of 604 square meters. You can find the surface area of pyramids as well. This is a pyramid. Notice you don't want to sit on that. We have a square base and triangles surrounding it. So again, you could choose to draw a net if you'd like. Not everybody's going to want to do that. Or you could just break it down into all of its faces. So I like to start with the base. In this case, our base is a square side times side, or 6 times 6, which is 36. 
in addition to that square, we have four triangles, and all four of these triangles are the same. So remember our formula, one half of the base times the height, so the half is going to stay. Our base is six because every side of this square is six, and the height, which is shown right here, is 15. So you can do this a couple different ways. You can say six times 15 is 90, half of 90 is 45, or you could take the half of six, keep it simple, half of six is three, three times 15 is 45. But you need to be careful here. That is one triangle, and if you look, you have four triangles. So we need to take that number and multiply it by four. Four times 45 is going to give us a total of 180 square inches. But you're not done yet. Don't forget to go back and add that square base. So that square base was 36 plus 180 is 216 square inches. All right, another example here of a pyramid, another square pyramid because each side of this is four. So we start with the base. I'm not drawing a net for this. That's I prefer to not draw nets. Just break it down piece by piece. So our base is a square. 4 times 4, which is 16. Now we have to focus on the triangles. Remember, 1 half, the base times the height. The base is 4, the height is 7. 4 times 7 is 28. Half of 28 is 14. You don't have one triangle, you have four triangles. So 4 times 14 is 56. Make sure you go back and add that square base to it. 16 plus 56, 72 square centimeters. Make sure you're paying attention to your units there, square centimeters. All right, so take a moment to pause this video and I'd like for you to try to solve each of these on your own. Go ahead and pause, I'll wait. Okay, how'd you do? Did you draw your net for a cube? If you remember, we had one of those earlier. This is one of those nets. It's not the only one. There are several, but this is the most famous one, most popular, I should say. All right, how'd you do with your surface area? Did you break it down? You've got a base that's a square. Five times five, 25. You've got four triangles, okay? One half the base times the height. So one half of five times 12. 5 times 12 is 60. Half of 60 is 30. But you don't have 1. You have 4. So 120 altogether. Plus the base gives you 145 centimeters squared. Did you get that? I hope you did. You have notes that you should have been filling out with this PowerPoint. You can go back and watch this as many times as you'd like. Don't forget about all the other video resources that I posted to help you. We do have a test on this, and it will be at the end of the week. Talk to you guys soon.